So today we're going to talk about the five mini signs a man shows he really likes you. These are mini, tiny. By the way, never do that in front of a guy. Always go tiny, okay? All right. So I'm sure you've heard things like a man will be attentive if he likes you. He will plan dates if he likes you. He will progress the relationship if he likes you. And he will be very direct about commitment. That's how a man shows he likes you. And those are obvious, right? Those are fairly obvious. But what about those subtle little signs that a man shows or even a woman shows that they genuinely care about this relationship they're in? See, here's the thing. Unconscious people, broken people, selfish people rarely do the little things to establish the deeper bond in relationship. Let me repeat that. The unconscious, broken, or selfish people rarely do these things. Now, many of you are familiar with my um, chart called the three types of people actively dating. Please forgive the shininess and the reflection here. But you can see it says the three types of people actively dating. They're and they're broken up in brackets of 20%, 60%, and 20%. And this is not a fact. It's merely an opinion. 20% of people are users. They seek short-term gain. They're love bombers. They're players. They're gold diggers. Those are the entitled people. They only care about their needs being met. And while on the bottom or the, the other side of the coin, the grower and builders, these seek long-term commitments. They are emotionally grown up. Right, I got to see this. <laughs> they have good relationship skills. They have their act together. And yet the vast majority of everybody falls into this spender category. This is true for men and women alike. They seek companionship. They seek connection. They seek coupling or sex. No direction. Uncertain, fearful. Usually have a dysfunctional life. So here's the tricky part of why I'm sharing this with you, because even some of those, the, the users, they're not going to exhibit very many of the things that we're going to talk about today. Those grown-up men, those grown-up women, those, uh, those grower and builders, they will absolutely demonstrate this. I mean, you don't even have to give it a second thought. The challenge is the spenders because they kind of give you a little taste they kind of give you a little taste in the early stage of dating. This, this is all wrapped up in the lust or limerence phase. When we're in lust and limerence, I mean, the chemicals are so palpable when you are physically and sexually attracted to another human being that the stuff that comes out of our mouth, <laughs> I'm saying our because I'm guilty of what I'm sharing today. I'm guilty of, of exaggerating. I'm guilty of, of love bombing. I'm guilty of painting a future picture that never came to fruition. I hope I'm better at this now. I'd like to think going into the next one, I will be a lot better. We'll see what happens. But I will tell you, these feelings are so palpable that the words that come out of our mouth may not be indicative of how the relationship is going to unfold over a period of time. You see, the real, the real tipping point really centers down, it comes down to about being all in, all in. Are you familiar with what all in means? Like damn the torpedoes, full steam ahead. We are going to climb to the top of the mountain. We are going to get through this chasm. We are going to get through everything. We are all in. See, it used to be hundreds, if not thousands of years ago, people got married in a rather short period of time. That demonstrated an all in. There was a sacred bond to commitment. Now there is no need for a sacred bond. In fact, the vast majority of humans are in casual relationships. I think casual relationships, situationships, friends with benefits, probably outnumber marriages here in the United States. Let me repeat that. I, I don't think I've ever said this before. I believe that casual relationships, situationships, We'll talk about situations oops, in a second. Uh, friends with benefits probably outnumbers the amount of married couples out in the world today, or at least here in the United States. Now, if you're not familiar with situationship, these are two people that are having physical intimacy with each other on a regular basis, but they have not 
put a label on it. <laughs> they have not agreed to monogamy and exclusivity. One person may be wanting monogamy and exclusivity, but the other person hasn't agreed to it. Those are known as situationships. And let me put a thumbnail right here. Ladies, if you are having physical intimacy with a man, you have every right to gain clarity, particularly in the area of monogamy, if that's something you desire. And you absolutely have the, the right to ask for some level of, of um, exclusivity. Isn't it interesting? I said some level. I, I guess uh, for each person that might mean something different. But I, I do believe that, you know what's sad? You know what's sad about dating today? There is a real lack of respect for other human beings. But by the way, and you ladies are just as guilty of what I'm about to say. I've spoken to women um, very recently who basically have told me they're not ready for a relationship and yet they are happy to go out with a man to get a free meal, okay? So you're just as users just as much as men, okay? So um, you can be, let me reframe that, you can be users just as much as men can be. So. Um, by the way, I put those tacky things here because I want the collars to stay like that, but I didn't do a good job, <laughs> which is kind of interesting because it relates to one of our uh, five mini signs. A man shows he really likes you. So, okay. Why am I bringing up this all in? Because here's the bottom line. If you find yourself going down the exploration of a fully committed relationship with someone, it is imperative that you have deeper conversations sooner rather than later. Let me repeat that, it is imperative. It's a moral imperative. Let's, let's even make it a moral issue. It's a moral imperative to have conversations. In fact, if you're not familiar with the work of Dr. Stan Tatkin, I want everyone to write this, someone write this in the chat box. The Ten Commandment for Relationship Essentials. This is by Dr. Stan Tatkin, okay? The Ten Ascent Commandments for Relationship Essentials. Can someone put that in the chat box or in the uh, comment section? These are 10 agreements people should, should make with each, not should, I invite people to make with each other if they're having regular physical intimacy with one another. Because quite frankly today, with friends with benefits, I mean, we're just, it's a cheaper version of prostitution to some degree. Oh, excuse me, I'm supposed to say sex worker, okay? It's a less expensive version of it because you don't have to get a hotel room. So anyway, um, let me just give you the first commandment. Thou shalt protect the safety and security of thy relationship at all costs. Now, there, I'm not gonna go through all 10, Thou shalt base the relationship on true mutuality, remembering that all decisions and actions must be good for thee and for thine partner. You know, and the list goes on. Why am I stressing this? Because, you know, today, it's all about attraction and romance. It's all about gaining attraction. It's all about romance. By the way, you ladies, many of you feel very entitled to romance as a way to give your body to another human being. But let me just tell you something. The ro most romantic man doesn't necessarily mean they're even remotely capable of being in a healthy, happy relationship. I continually say romance should be reserved for a committed relationship, not as an entry point into relationship. So I, I'm, I'm stressing this right now. The importance of stressing this is because if you want to build a relationship with someone, it starts by establishing very early on the rules of engagement. What are our rules of engagement? Folks, many of you know my dating vows. Here's a, by the way, in the show notes, there's something called my dating vows, okay? I'm just going to read this to you, but I say to you, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Have you ever heard the saying, women are the gatekeepers of sex and men are the gatekeepers of commitment? 
The dating vow, much like the 10 commandments for a saint, or, uh, relationship essentials, establishes some guidelines early on if two people are going to explore a relationship together, including physical intimacy. And it goes like this. I agree, but each one of you agree to this. I agree to explore the process of getting to know you with the intent to declare something serious within three to six months. It doesn't take a person much more than three to six months to know that they want to be all in with you. I agree to be monogamous sexually while we're having regular sex together. That's a fair request, ladies. Except, except many of you have duct tape over your mouth. I'm not willing to make that. I'm not willing to make that request. I have duct tape on my mouth. Fear. Okay. I recognize that many of you have a legitimate fear about speaking your truth. This is a core wound that has probably been established from your childhood where you couldn't speak up growing up. I get that. I have a great amount of compassion for you. But at the end of the day, when it comes to physical intimacy, you have the capacity to make these um, agreements. You can agree to not actively seek to meet date others while you're in the dating process, including taking down your dating profiles. You agree to speak up if this isn't working for me versus pulling back, ghosting, or disappearing. And you agree to invest regular time in the process of getting to know you, which looks like, and many of you know what I, I'm, I'm seeking, a relationship where we spend three or four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork building skills. Um, both in our personal, our professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together, getting married. That's the rules of engagement. That's the standard. I invite you all to establish what your standard is. Now, I get that 90% of people will think this is stupid. I bet you 90% of people would think the dating vows are stupid. I can tell you, I get calls from clients by the way, there's a link below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. It's in the, in the show notes. I get calls from clients all the time. The men love it. The emotionally grown up men. Not the unconscious, broken, or selfish man. No, he's not going to like this one bit. He doesn't want to have any rules. Now, they're not rules. They're more guidelines. Okay, but he doesn't want to make agreements. Because he's not serious. So what do emotionally grown up men, how do they show they like you? I'm going to be candid with you. I came up with these from my own personal experiences, okay? So there's going to be a little bit of me in this one. So the five mini signs, and again, mini means mini, not mini, mini signs. Remember, never do this in front of a guy. Always do this. The first mini sign. He pays attention to what you like. He pays attention to what you like. So let me give you an example. Oh, my first relationship after my divorce, I met a really fantastic woman. We only dated for three months. I was a train wreck when I met her. Um, and she was coming over to my house for the first time. Well, I went to her home several times and I noticed she drank. I don't know if they make this anymore. It was called Penta Water. Penta, P-E-N-T-A, I believe. Penta Water. So I made sure to go to the grocery store and buy a couple of the things that I knew she liked. She didn't ask me to do this. I wanted to do this because I liked this person. That's funny. Many of you know that I lost a child. There's a picture of Connor right there. That's his brother, Colin. You know, when I gave, their, uh, gave his eulogy, I said something. You know, most parents love their children. They genuinely love their children. Here's those sticker things. <laughs> but you know what's interesting? I like both my boys. I like them. Like, not everybody likes their children. They might love their children, but they might not like them. I think like is a very powerful emotion. When you like someone, you can have friends in your lives that you love, but you don't necessarily like them. You can have brothers and sisters that you love, but you don't necessarily like them. I think like is a very powerful emotion. And I'm here to say when a man likes a woman, he'll pay attention to what she likes, and he's going to make effort to make that available to her. 
Okay. Number two, he remembers something important to you. He remembers something important to you. You might have said something three months ago. And he brings it up in the conversation. He might say something like, do you remember this? Do you remember when you told me about that vacation you had at age 12 and you mentioned um, going to Yosemite, um, you know, uh, Yosemite, let's see, let's go, let's pick another place. You went to Six Flags Magic Mountain in, in um, Los Angeles. It's an amusement park. He goes, I just saw an ad for that and made me think of that time that you shared that with me. He actually remembers something that might have been important to you if you shared something important to him. He will actually remember it. That is a great sign. See, when you're sharing something at an emotional level, at a viscerally emotional level, like some experience that really um, made a difference in your life, I don't know why I picked Six Flags Matching Mountain. It just popped in my head. Haven't been there in 40 years. Thing is, if you share something that was viscerally important to you, viscerally important to you, he's going to remember that because he likes you. He can feel the energy when you shared that and he felt it for himself and it made an imprint for him. He will remember something that was important to you. And that's a great sign that he really likes you. Number three. Okay, again, I shared these are going to be personal things. Uh, in my last relationship, I began dressing nicer. I happen to live by the ocean. I live at the beach. I happen to be a jeans and flip-flop kind of guy. But the relationship I was in, she liked that well sharp-dressed man. And so many of you notice that I no longer wear those T-shirts with sayings on them. I dress a little nicer. It's because I, I cared. I knew it was something important to her, and I wanted to make her happy. We will do things to improve ourselves. It's like that line from As Good As It Gets. You make me want to be a better man. That is a great demonstration that a man really likes you when he wants to do things for himself that improves his life. Now, to some degree, did I do it for her? Yeah, but I got to tell you something. I remember wearing a sport coat on our first um, uh, trip uh, where we got on an airplane and I liked how it felt. I liked looking a little bit sharper. So it wasn't only for me, it wasn't only for her, it was for me too. In other words, I wanted to improve upon myself. That was a reflection of how I felt about her, but it also got to mirror. And I'm not saying it's this specific example per se. It could be a multitude examples. Might be physical health where they exercise just a little bit more because they really like you. They might diet a little bit more because they really like you. Whatever it is, they work on improving themselves. And for me, it just happened to be I wanted to dress a little bit nicer because it was something I knew she liked. Okay, number four, <laughs> you guys are going to laugh at this one. But I think this is important. I really do, is putting the toilet seat down. While you might think that should be an expectation from your perspective, from our perspective, most men, especially if they live by themselves, we don't need to do that. Only when we need to go number two. Now, I do know that there are men who sit when they pee. But when someone's in our lives and we care about them, when we like them, we'll the, the real point of this is we consciously make effort, recognizing that we men might do some things different than you. Now, I've never, by the way, ladies, why is it you don't put the toilet seat up for us? I, I, that one, I, I'd really like to have an answer on that one, why it doesn't go the other way around. But I will tell you this. You see, an unconscious man doesn't care, doesn't care about the toilet seat. A broken man doesn't care. A selfish man doesn't care. He doesn't care. He's like, go to another bathroom. You can keep the seat down all you want. That's how broken, un, you know, unconscious, selfish people act. But a man who genuinely cares, he's going to make the effort. And let me be first to one to admit, we will forget and make a mistake every now and again. And God forbid it isn't two in the morning when you got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> but I do believe um, it's a demonstration because if, again, if a man has lived by himself for quite a bit of time and he's not, do, doesn't do it habitually, it becomes a pattern. And it, to change that pattern requires liking someone because if we don't like it, we probably won't do it. 
And the fifth sign, and I think this is the most important, he listens but doesn't try to fix. He listens but doesn't try to fix. Men innately want harmony, and we believe in solving problems. But I say when a man can genuinely hold space for you, when you just simply want to un unload. I was in a relationship with a woman. We had a, a, we had a code sign. She would say, um, I, need, I, I need your advice. Meant she's going to share something with me. But that meant I want you to give me your opinion or give me your suggestion. Okay? So she'd either say, I want your advice. Or she would say, I need you to hold the basket. I need you to hold the basket. And what that meant was she's going to vomit whatever what needed to be vomited. And I would just attentively listen, uh-huh, 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 knowing that that's what she needed. That got to the point she didn't even need to do that anymore, but we had that little system to begin with. I'm here to say that, but I want to take it a little step deeper. When he's actually listening to you while he's holding the basket, He's really caring about you in that moment. He genuine a, a man who is a grower builder, not that user, not that spender, the man who's the grower builder. He genuinely wants harmony for you, but he will hold the space and, until you invite him in to actually request some improvement or some other change going on. Folks, is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. These are subtle little things that you might think are big, but if they're kind of small to us, for some men, it might be monumental. That's probably because they're a spender who is trying to become a grower builder, okay? And it might be monumental to do this work, but at the end of the day, the grower builders, they want harmony. They want you to be happy. They pay attention. They care. And that's how you distinctively can tell the difference. And let me tell you, the grower and builders want all-in relationships. They will not settle for anything less than an all-in relationship. Because if you're not both all-in, it's casual. It means you can step out on it at any time. And I hope you're not seeking that kind of relationship. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know if it is. Post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. I do my best to read them all in the first 24 hours. If this did resonate with you, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if you want to schedule a discovery call with me or join my group called Midlife Love Master or follow me on Instagram in the show notes below and in the first comment will be ways to connect with me directly. All right.